Hello, everybody. Welcome back to How Come. This week's episode is late because I was having a breakdown. Having a breakdown. I've been having a bunch of those lately. I just keep crying. Um, I Sometimes I know why because it's like, oh, the world sucks. And then sometimes I'm just like, I suck. And then, yeah, I don't know. I'll spiral. And uh, But then I journaled a little, wrote to a therapist, um, did some weed And uh, yeah, now I feel better. Recorded with a really cool companion who was on this episode and recorded with Sammy Sage. Uh, We actually recorded this like two weeks ago. Um, We've been waiting to put this episode out, Um, but she is fantastic. This episode is a double Sammy because the companion is Sammy and then the guest is Sammy. So we have an amazing companion named Sammy. And then our guest this week is co-founder of Betches Media, Sammy Sage. Um, She's also the host of the Morning Announcements podcast, Diet Starts Tomorrow, Betches Sup, Afternoon Tea podcast. I've been a a follower of Betches for a really long time. And uh, yeah, this conversation is really fun. It it goes all over the place because it's just talking and falling in love after following each other on the internet for a really long time. And I think you're just going to have the best time listening to this one. I want to thank Jan Leslie Gemstone Pipes for supporting this episode of How Come. Go to janlesley.com, click on Gemstone Pipes, and use code How Come to get 25% off your Gemstone Pipes order. How come? How come? How come I can't achieve? How come I can't achieve? I'm rolling up my sleeves. I'm rolling up my sleeves. Oh, baby, I believe these guests can help. Cause I can't do it by myself I wanna jizz Hello! Oh my god! Hello! <laughs> Yay! How is everyone? We are so good. We're excited to talk to you. Yes, yeah, exactly. And, <laughs> and hear about your fun congrats. Thank you so much. Oh my god, thank you so much. Can you first tell everybody how old you were and where you were during this congrats? And how old you are now? So I am now 22. I want to say the first time I came was about, God, it was so young. <laughs> it mm-hmm. was like really young when I discovered it. So maybe six or eight. I knew it was like early elementary school years mm-hmm. because the way I found out like what felt good was I was just in my room at mm-hmm. home in our little bunk bed. <laughs> no one was there. And I was like, wow, lying down on my hand, like right between my legs, mm-hmm. feels so good. And I was just like rubbing on it, basically, anywhere from just like in front of the TV lying down, or I just felt like, <laughs> wow, this is a really cool way to take a nap because I'd be really tired after. And like, mm-hmm. I feel really great as well. Mm-hmm. And like, when I started doing everywhere, like, I went to daycare and I didn't know what this was. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go take a nap in the corner. Yeah. And like, like over like the school uniform and everything. Yeah. And like, it came to the point where like the people mentioned to my mom, they're like, she's doing something in the corner all the time. Like, Cammy's napping like a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Like, is she okay? She's always alone in the corner. (laughs) (laughs) But um, yeah. So once my mom eventually talked to me, like, that's like a private habit. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Oh, okay. So Mm -hmm. I was doing it like a lot alone. (laughs) So I just like, didn't understand the concept still. Yeah. It was never explained to me. Um, and she, was she like cool about it? Like, was she as, was she nice or was it like a weird talk for you? It was weird because there wasn't really any talk. It was Mm -hmm. just like, we would call it like the bad habit. Like that was like the, nickname that's for it. a very positive connotation. Exactly. It's not, yeah. but I just felt that like it was a private thing. So I just mm. did it privately regardless. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was never really talked about. The podcast really introduced me to like opening a lot, opening up a lot more about my like sexuality and just being mm-hmm. open about that entire realm. So like started from the beginning, I actually found out about the podcast from my best friend because similar to you like she wasn't able to have an O, Mm -hmm. but like this just opened up a huge dialogue for both of us and then the rest of our like Mm -hmm. girlfriends and we just kept sharing the podcast with everybody and now everyone's so happily talking about sex and their experiences 
Um, but anyways, it got me to buying a sex toy and mm. discovering Bayessa and then also discovering like feminist porn and supporting a better industry and like mm -hmm. being a more conscious participant. Mm -hmm. So I bought the um, Air by Bayessa, the cool. dual sim. And I have it. I haven't tried oh it God. yet. I like the convenience of a two in one. Okay. <laughs> I'm like pretty Is much like a about circle, efficiency. Though? It's the one that's like, it's just like this. It looks like that. Okay. Yeah. They so, sent me one that looks like a fucking Polly Pocket house. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> is that the one with BuzzFeed, right? The collapse. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> a little compact. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, where's my little woman? <laughs> yeah. So it has the little suction y at mm -hmm. the one end, and then basically, yeah, a vibrator in the other that you can insert. And it's, I really was more so towards the suction. Mm -hmm. um component because I felt like I could insert anything <laughs> but yeah yeah once I really felt more open to like combining both and just really like focusing on how it felt mm -hmm. I I'm pretty sure I've like started squirting <laughs> I'm like Yay! not <laughs> sure because it's most you know given the pandemic's like mostly just been me but yeah. that's also let me really get in touch like with my body Oh, that's so good. So you're a dual gal. Mm -hmm. You're an inside outside man. Yeah, I like a lot going on. <laughs> I like that. Did you leave puddles? I would not say anything huge. It definitely like, but like the a whole little area. patch. Yeah, like little patches for sure. Mm -hmm. I think that counts. Yeah. Yay, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Does it feel different when you've thought you squirted versus just the orgasm yeah I feel yeah okay. so much more exhausted after okay yeah yeah <laughs> cool also it's so like difficult to be like yeah 100 percent, that's it but like if that's like that's the the goal to feel that way is like exhausted and dehydrated <laughs> for sure <laughs> um sick and wait so where where, where are the, where are you right now where are these comes taking place these comes are taking place at home because I still live at home ah. with um, my parents and what state um, California. Cool. Oh my god, we're so close. Yes. Have your sex talks with your mom changed since like you guys are still under the same roof and like you're much more advanced now? Like uh, you're talking more to your friends, but like does it expand to mother? It does not extend to parents at all. So I actually okay. live with my father. Okay. But. In either way, we don't really talk about sex or I'm more so like private with my relationships and mm -hmm. we don't really just talk about romance and sex, but it's mm -hmm. like still gives a sense of like, yes, we respect your choices and like we are happy with it as long as you're happy. That's nice. Yeah. I don't know if I'm just an oversharer, but I like, do you, you like having that type of relationship like is it comfortable for you to not talk as much about it as well at this point in my life I really like that it's pretty separate but mm -hmm. I would like it to be so much more open mm -hmm. I think it would have a more fun and casual dynamic and like develop our relationships further than mm -hmm. anything mm -hmm. yeah that they can be happy for you in that way because it just makes it seem uh the antithesis of like the bad habit it's like no we're happy that you have a good habit yeah it would definitely bring it full circle and I think I've also become a person that's such a distinct personality like within our family despite like how blended it is mm -hmm. that I I think I do have more of a liberty to be more open about things and be more casual with our parents compared to like my siblings, for example. Like, Are you I don't, the outspoken middle child? I'm the youngest. Oh, <laughs> the baby. So you got the, the way paved for you and you can be bad. Yeah, okay. but I'm not entirely, I love my siblings, don't get me wrong, <laughs> but I don't have to like shoot like super, super high. They're all incredible human beings, but Unreal. they have very different histories. Great. Yes but they're all incredibly amazing people. And when you say that you guys are mixed, is that like a blended family? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so some step, some step siblings, some single siblings, yeah. Did you guys ever talk about 
like sex between the sibling, not like not sex with, the sibling, but like as siblings <laughs> growing up, did you discuss sex and sexuality? I think like one time, like two times distinctly stand out, like with my brother, I think he was talking about like asking his girlfriend to prom mm-hmm. and he was like, yeah, you know, like maybe I'll like stay over. And he's like older than me. So I didn't really understand. Yeah. And I was like, wait, how do you have a key to her house? And her parents don't know. And he's like, because <laughs> he has sex and I didn't understand like, Oh my God, my sibling had sex. Like that's a thing. Mm-hmm. Or even when my sister, obviously she has, she had a baby. So she had to have sex or in her yeah. case, she had yeah. to have sex. Yeah. Um, but I think it was when I was, we were really young and we, just ask like in general like what's the difference between boys and girls parts mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then like no one talks about it later <laughs> you guys are a one convo family pretty much just sounds like gotcha I like, mean but it's so it cool that you can come from a one convo family and then end up with like so many friends that listen to the same sex podcast and then now you're here definitely I'm so grateful for like my friend network my female friend network particularly because I I'm starting to talk to like other new adult friends and Mm -hmm. like it's very rare to have this amount of women in one circle I guess just talk about sex so openly other than the how come fan base yeah (laughs) it's nice yeah I'm happy that we have this place now Mm -hmm. it's become a really cool platform and I like really really admire it thank you we just have to work on the discord because it's complete shit but (laughs) what discord isn't (laughs) We have a discord and it's total shit. And Robin and I just like tried to like post pictures of like Grace and Robin's dog, Frankie. And we were like, oh, this will get things going. And it didn't. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And then back to Sammy's comes, comings and goings. Mm -hmm. um, Are you coming with other people? Are you able to do that yet? I came with one person. Yay. Yes. It was cool. It, it was last year, so it's been a while. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's, it's okay. been a while for everyone, actually. Yeah. Yeah. What is a year at this point? Even if you live together, it's been a while. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That one, my, I would say like my partner history is really interesting mm-hmm. because so I am bi and I've like mostly been with like male partners, but I've like, not really like felt anything like, not really like felt in the groove it also felt very mm-hmm. centered like around them so mm-hmm. I didn't feel so connected yeah but then when my first time with a woman and the person who I came with even though like I still wasn't really like emotionally connected to her it was like great sex mm-hmm. because it felt like more understood and like more open mm-hmm. and like it wasn't just centered about like the male experience yeah yeah mm-hmm. Ooh, fun. Yes, yeah, lots to unpack Where there. is she now? <laughs> <laughs> ghosted, unfortunately. She ghosted you? You ghosted her? I did. So I like, that girl. it was bad. I know I'm so, I feel bad about it because she was You're really like, nice. You're like, you make me come and I ghost. <laughs> yeah, I ghost. Well, I got like really sick after, it was not COVID, but I got really yeah. sick after. And then things kept You're allowed to have out. COVID. People have COVID. <laughs> Yes, people are alive. Yes. <laughs> no. You're like, it wasn't COVID. I'm like, we are not in the same room and <laughs> you're not still sick and it's allowed. <laughs> it's truly just such a reactionary habit. <laughs> when I cough, when I'm like smoking, I'm like, it's weed, it's weed. I, thought, oh I know. <laughs> okay. Remy, will you grace me with like a little hit together? Yay. <laughs> Amazing. Cheers. This is a dream. <laughs> Yay. Oh my gosh, can I take a picture of her? Cheers. <laughs> Thank you. So cute. We're the cutest people in the world. And I have to ask you a question, and I think you know what it is. Um, Sammy, did you finish? Yes, I did finish, and it was so great. Amazing. Oh, amazing. Uh, thank you so much for coming. <laughs> yes, thank you so much as well. I really appreciate it. Duh. Um, and yeah, keep them coming, and thanks for listening. Yes, of course. And we love you. Goodbye. (laughs) We love you a lot. (laughs) (laughs) Yay. Good job.
Oh, wasn't that fun? I loved the cheersing. So cute. Oh my God. I can't wait until I'm like in my own apartment again and I can cheers with my little gemstone pipes um, because they're like so chic and so pretty and I can't smoke pipes in the house because obviously I live with Ray and Jane. Me and Sammy are just doing that live with parents but smoke weed every day life. Um, and yeah, I do get to use my pipes though in the glory son and I do it I do it very often as I was saying in the intro I've been having mad breakdowns but something that can always cheer me up is a beautiful stone with a with a cool thing that you can do with said beautiful stone um, I love Jan Leslie gemstone pipes they merge crystal healing with herbal healing like literally when I say thank you for supporting this episode, this episode would not have happened without the support from Jan Leslie Gemstone Pipes. You know, like I needed those good vibes from the crystals. I needed the herbal healing from the earth. Um, and yeah, I love Jan Leslie Gemstone Pipes. Each handcrafted piece is the embodiment of form meeting function culminating in a gorgeous luxury accessory to use or display. Um, all of the pipes are uh, hand selected by Jan Leslie. She selects each crystal and natural gemstone uh, for color, quality, uniqueness. Um, each pipe is handmade from natural stone. So no two pipes are the same. Um, and they're just like delightful. Like I don't even usually like pipes at all. And I cannot stop talking about how much I love these. Like they're easy to smoke. They come with a gold and a silver little flower holder. So if you like a different look that day, different colors, you can change them out. And they're just the type of thing that it, it like, they look like a little art piece, even if you don't use them and they have good healing vibes in them. Um, so I have teamed up with Jan Leslie Gemstone Pipes and Jewelry, and they're offering 25% off your Gemstone Pipes order when you go to janlesley.com and click on Gemstone Pipes. And you use How Come to get 25% off your Gemstone Pipes order. I love my Gemstone Pipes. I received the uh, Rose Quartz and the Blue Gold Stone. Rose Quartz is the Love Stone. I think it is so beautiful, and I love it so much, and I love to rub it, and it's very smooth. Uh, the blue gold stone, do I believe that it brings me money? Yes. But do I like its sparkliness even more? Yes. And do I also love how angular it is in contrast to my rose quartz love stone? Yes. I'm not telling you to get two pipes, but like I like having two. Um, my rose quartz, I put the silver little thing in and the blue gold stone, I keep the gold in. Um, but yeah, you can mix them up and... I, we love them and everybody who's ordered them is obsessed with them too. The love stone is also good. I should note this because it is a gateway to the heart chakra. So even if you're not smoking, the gemstone is believed to flush out negative, angry thoughts and replace them with love. So if you're having a breakdown like I do, you know, use that pipe, breathe it in, breathe in love and exhale hate and have a, have a good time. Anyway, um, gemstone pipes, you guys, can't recommend enough. Um, if you want your own and you do go to janlesley.com, click on gemstone pipes and use code how come to get 25% off your gemstone pipes order. I'm telling you, go to the website, janlesley.com. Look at all the ones they have. They are gorgeous. janlesley.com. Click on gemstone pipes and use code how come for 25% off your gemstone pipes order. And then you'll feel chill and, um, then maybe we can cheers through a Zoom someday. Uh, yeah, you guys, if you have a congratulations that you want to share on the podcast, DM us or um, email us at info at howcomepodcast.com. Um, if you have a congratulations that you want to put on our map, go to howcomepodcast.com and you can put it on the virtual map there without even talking to me. I don't know why you wouldn't want to talk to me. Why don't you want to talk to me? But if you don't, yeah, do that. And you can do it anonymously and blah, blah, blah. Um, what else? Oh, join our Discord. It is total shit, but we're trying to make it more fun. I don't know. I want you guys to like hang out. Everybody keeps being like, give us a place to hang out. I guess most people are hanging out in the Facebook group, but then like some people don't like Facebook. Anyway, there's a Discord, there's a Facebook. Do whatever you want. I made a new friend this week, Sammy Sage, and I think you're going to love this episode. Um, I love you guys. And yeah, here we go. 
welcome Sammy Sage. Hello, Revy. Hello. I'm so excited to have you here on this podcast. I don't know if we've ever like, I know we DM'd like, but I know I've known who you are forever. And um, and I've known who you are forever. I love following you. Probably my favorite element is your like in-law vibes. <sighs> so funny. They're so cute. They're good sports. <laughs> <laughs> they are the reason why I have survived this year. Ray and Jane vibes. That is, that's really good because it's good to have good in-laws. I'm very upset for the day that we're going to have to leave. But usually I just see you via Instagram Same. and you <laughs> recently started this thing that I'm like obsessed with morning announcements where you talk about the headlines that week. Are there any headlines that you are just dying to talk about? Okay. I love the fact that they used like pepper spray to break up the spring breakers in Miami beach. <laughs> it, it sort of like woke me up to the fact that like shit's about to get weird. Like we are like a month or two away from kind of everybody's spring break. Yeah. And I am both anxious and excited for certain things, but quite nervous, I will say. Yeah, I'm like not stoked on going back to real life yet because I don't think we're very prepared. No. I feel I feel like the CDC and like everybody's just been peer pressured into being like yeah, it's done. Yes, totally. Totally. I mean, some people, it's been, they never, they're not even like going back to the world because they never left. They never they just left. just sort right. of like continued going to weddings. They just did and, it in Miami. Exactly. It, I do feel unprepared. I feel unprepared socially. My yeah. stamina is yeah. like. Yeah. My social tank is so low. Like I literally, I went to see somebody yesterday outdoors, but like was staring at my phone, just looking at the time, being like, how long have I been socializing? Like, is this cool? Am I done? Yeah, like I need breaks. So I'll tell you this weekend. So we've been staying in Colorado and Airbnb, but like mm -hmm. we went to Vail and Aspen this weekend. Mm -hmm. And those are like more social places. And Avi had a yes. friend who met us, who we like skied with, met People up People go to Opre Ski without skiing. Oh yeah, but we we love to ski, but we also enjoy and skiing like, is very safe. Yeah, exactly. Like you're, you're not, you're literally near no one. It's a problem mm -hmm. if you are, yeah. but, but, um, <laughs> but with, you know, the opera ski, like it, there was like a lot, like there were a lot of people and seeing how much everyone's like, there were just people who they would eat indoors. They mm -hmm. just didn't even seem to like the mask was more of a requirement than like, I'm using this because I use it. Right. You know? Yeah. So yeah. I think it's going to be a weird, but even just the act of sort of like going and socializing was a lot of mixed emotions. Like it's there, weird. Didn't, there didn't seem to be enough acknowledgement of like what we have all been through. Like, yeah. <laughs> like I need some sky writing that it's like, you probably feel weird right now. It's normal. And so, if somebody asks you how you are, it's okay to like really tell them now. Like, I feel like yeah. if somebody is like, how are you? How have you been? If I say like good, it's like, how? Well, that's not good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I, I've been like agonizing even over like, I'm like, ugh, I have to like pick out shoes again. Uh-huh. I don't want to wear shoes again. I haven't worn shoes all year except clogs. <laughs> okay. So I brought two pairs of shoes with me that I didn't like really try mm -hmm. and both did not fit. Like they were both too small. I think it's because uh. honestly, I think it's because I gained quite a bit of weight mm -hmm. your feet expand. Mm -hmm. So I literally had to go buy sneakers like on vacation. <laughs> And that's fine. <laughs> yeah. That's honestly, this year has been all about buying shit a size up for me. Yeah. Like, and They're not, and hopefully not crying about it. Mm -hmm. You know, like you could just buy the smaller thing and pray and pray that you're going to get smaller and then waste money or whatever. Or you could just buy something a size up. And if right. you don't need it in a month, go back to your other shit that's a size down. Right. Like I was looking at my like step counter from this year to last year mm -hmm. and like, the whole thing, like the whole graph, like depletes by like the the axis of the graph, just like goes drops down. off in March. <laughs> because, but no, no, but like the it actually needed like a smaller axis for this year than last year. Hilarious. Because I was like going from ten thousand steps, like yeah. around there, to like one or two thousand. Yeah. So. And it's fine. Some of our friends got titties for the first time. I'm proud of them. <laughs> yeah, exciting. <laughs> but yeah, going back to the real world or whatever, like there is that anxiety of like, you're like, I want to be excited to see you. 
Like I am excited to see you, but I'm also like really nervous because there's all these like, either it's a couple or a friend group where it's like super vigilant person is married to like the cough in your mouth, go to parties person. Yeah. And so you're just like, wait, I don't even know who I can hang out with. I'm excited to not have to like worry about how careful other people are being. Like if I trust them. Like, right. Yeah. It's just weird. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. I think there is a certain extent of like still keeping your bubble if you like are a careful person. Just being like, yeah, I, I basically have tabs on this person and I know who they hang out with or whatever. Right. Something I was just talking to one of like my coworkers about was like, imagine if this had happened, like, at least like to me or or to you as like a single person mm-hmm. at mm. age like 23. Mm. Like how buck wild would you be going? Oh, Sammy, in- I always say I don't know what I would have been like this year if I were single. Like even as a 31 year old. I don't yeah. know how selfish I possibly could have been. Right. Like it's hard to put yourself in even your like former self's shoes. Yeah. Yeah. You know that um, Joan Didion quote that's like, I've lost touch with a lot of people I used to be. <laughs> I didn't know that quote, but that's um, a good one. It's yeah. a good one. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm, I'm like, I subscribe to that. I would not hang out with a lot of former Remy's. Same. Um, like it, it really, sometimes I just think, I remember something. I'm like, holy fuck, what a pit in my stomach. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I love, I love that you understand that feeling. And I know that you understand that feeling because you have been running one of the most successful brands in of my lifetime that I feel like I really came of age with in college. Um, and now it's your 10 year anniversary and yeah, I, I, I'm just so forever impressed by you guys because it was really the first, the first thing that came out that we were all paying attention to and it didn't go away and it evolved and it like has just grown into such a beautiful young woman, you know? You know, thank you. I can't even tell you how, like, like you saying that is what like the past 10 years have like the re- that is the reward in the past 10 years <laughs> that like it is like like the fact that that is your experience that you feel like you've grown mm-hmm. up with it like both you know good and bad like mm-hmm. all, like that you can see yourself in it over time like i can't even tell you how like it gives me like something i never thought i would get is like work chills do you know how people talk about that no <laughs> oh my god it's like when something really great happens like at work you get they call it work chills i suppose mm. I have, I think, I've, I think okay. that is work chills. That's awesome. Yes, I love to give you work chills. And <laughs> Thank you. So Betches, for anybody who doesn't know about them, is an amazing, iconic brand. You've got like podcasts under you. You've got a website. It initially started out, when I started reading it, as a blog. Uh, yeah. And it was a fantastic blog. I wrote you the other day. I was like, do you still have the sisters blog? Because like, I need it. Um, and it would just be on these topics that were like, it was like things betches love and then, things betches yeah. love or like are associated with the betch lifestyle. And yes. it would explain being betchy. Do you want to give your definition of betchy? Honestly, like it's, it's there. It's not one definition. It's mm-hmm. sort of like a life, a, a state of mind that has honestly evolved a lot since yeah. we originally defined it. Yeah. But I think it's sort of just what people associate with like millennial women. Yes. And yeah. at the time. It, Betches is yeah. millennial pink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's not anymore. We just, well, no. we just changed our color. Rebrand. Yeah. yeah. But, um, but at the time we were trying to sort of like counter like the bro, you know, like mm-hmm. Tucker Max was very popular mm-hmm. and like being like this asshole bro was mm-hmm. like very, mm-hmm. you know, was cool. So that was like what we were trying to sort of answer. Mm-hmm. But for for women, obviously, and then it was really like a satire. Yeah, it was like a, se- was like a semi satire on the way like we would talk to each other and mm-hmm. think about things and kind of like making fun of yourself for like all the ways that like we behaved were a little bit privileged and fucked up. up and, yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. It was like yeah. white feminism, but totally. But it was a parody. And that's what so many people didn't understand in the beginning. Like I had so many friends who were genuinely being like, my God, this is the Bible. Like I need to like talk like this and do this or whatever. And But to a certain extent, like I would read them and I go, I feel like these girls are making fun of yes. like themselves, but also the culture and other girls who are 
going out and doing it harder. Yeah. So, so you, so you totally, you totally got it because that is exactly what it was. It was like, we sort of exist in this culture, but there's a lot of ridiculous and even wrong things about it. And Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the extent of how wrong, like is something that we, you know, came to understand more, but, um, yeah, it was really making fun of fun of ourselves and mm-hmm. the people around us. And that was really the purpose of it. I do think that only about like half the audience got that though. But that's okay. And that's why it's so, yeah. it was so interesting because you could grab the half that genuinely was there for it and thinks that, you know, makeup and hair and not that superficial things aren't important, but like that it was just that at face value. But that it was just that at face value. And then you guys kind of like tricked them into following you and then like <sighs> took them on this journey of self-growth too. You know, I, I, I hope so. I mean, we've definitely like created things that have, that came from like echoes of what we, you know, mm-hmm. had originally like to think that we used to write about like dieting and now we have Mm -hmm. like Aileen and I do diet starts tomorrow. And like where that really came from was like us coming to terms with like the, 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 the disordered eating and like Mm -hmm. the fat phobia and the, the way that we had sort of our lives and so many other women's lives Mm -hmm. have been run by, by dieting and wanting to shrink themselves. And now our mindset is totally different Mm -hmm. than it used to be, but it did evolve out of that. So, and now I think, you know, I think the audience has obviously grown up with us and really understands where we're at and where we're trying to go. Even diet starts tomorrow is like a trick into like, (sighs) yeah, okay, diet starts tomorrow or whatever. And like, we know that phrase because we've lived that phrase over and over. And then like you get there and it's like, hey, you look fine. Right, right. I mean, in the beginning we were heavily like when we started diet starts tomorrow we were we still believed that we could like get to the goal weight and Mm -hmm. stay there and be like oh we're Mm -hmm. good now Mm -hmm. and the it's now been oh it's almost three years old um on on 420 it's three years old happy birthday little stoner baby yeah (laughs) so and I mean yeah so coming up on three years like it's we we went on that journey we of realizing like this is not going to work mm-hmm. and now we're sort of like trying to figure out how to deal with diet culture and yeah. the ways it affects us and it's really just kind of an examination it's not like we're like no it's like acknowledging yeah. like i saw a tiktok the other day i think another comedian uh named claire uh posted <laughs> a tiktok and it was like i know that growing up in this time period fucked me up. And then it was just all the pictures of Nicole Richie and Lindsay Lohan and Paris Hilton at their skinny, skinny, skinniest. And like, I remember being happy that Lindsay Lohan was bone skinny. I was like, thank God she finally deserves to be famous now. Oh, yeah. You no, know, it's like it, that was really that was the mindset that was drilled into us. And now I think people are seeing it more with especially like the Britney Spears stuff and Mm -hmm. watching those interviews back and seeing the Kim Kardashian Mm -hmm. covers when she was pregnant. And like, I don't know when it switched, Mm -hmm. but at some point that became, I think it was kind of like me too time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But that switched and now that's like not okay. And interviewers could not get away with, way they spoke to Paris Hilton sensitivities have definitely increased for the better I would Mm -hmm. say like I'd hope we watched those interviews change over time when people would ask Lauren Conrad what's your favorite position and she goes CEO that was an iconic (laughs) moment yeah because she turns it around on Mm -hmm. you know on Mm -hmm. on its head but up until like very recently I don't think that that was like expressly like misogyny was kind of just like there and normal how do you feel about girl boss culture i well okay what what do you define as girl let's let's do a definition before before we um before i we define okay it here. i feel of the people that i've seen who define themselves as girl bosses they are usually already pretty privileged and they put down other women and they're proud of themselves for adapting to the climate rather than changing the climate. 
Okay. I think that is an important piece. I also think that a big piece of what I'm going to say about it is toxic positivity is mm. a very important part of girl boss culture. Okay. Mm -hmm. So all these things, um, I think it's unhealthy for women. I think it's sort of like, it's, it's almost like a work form of diet, like a career diet culture. Yeah. Um, in its own right. And I think that first thing you said is in, it is typically incredibly privileged and it doesn't take into yeah. account the fact it also doesn't um, really seem to like include much respect for other, for jobs that are not like white collar mm -hmm. or professional or like mm -hmm. media type jobs, like, or, and, if you don't have kind of like this social media presence, like I would say the social media presence is very critical to mm -hmm. the girl boss culture. Like mm -hmm. without social media, there is no girl boss. I would say right. you're just like a competent woman. Right. Like, okay. Right. <laughs> you know, so the girl boss it, factor is what you're selling to the rest of the world. Exactly. Like part of putting, part of being a girl boss is putting that forth mm -hmm. and then sort of like, having this toxic positivity around like, if I can do it, so can you. And like, mm -hmm. just hustle a little harder, mm -hmm. but also like spend 45 minutes making your post about that, like aesthetically pleasing. And right. no one who actually, um, no one actually has time to do that if you're focusing on Yeah, your or like have a parent that like supports you. Like it's very hard for me to tell people how to start a podcast when – I'm coming from a place of I had someone taking care of my rent and my life and whatever. And it's not this easy. And like, not everybody has the time. And like Alyssa Lim Paris, who's a very funny comedian, did a, a uh, impression of an influencer. And it was like, this is how I got to where I am. Well, my husband has four million dollars or whatever it is. And it's like, but nobody ever tells you that part. Well, you, but here's the thing. It doesn't take like... Um you know, you can see what someone's house looks like. You know, you can see these markers that like indicate. And, Some and people think that it comes. So I know a podcaster who somebody asked me like, how much money is she making from her podcast because she has a summer home? Honey, she's always had a summer home. Right, right. I mean, I think what's this kind of lie that's like been sold to us is that like all the extravagant things you see on Instagram, most of those weddings, vacations, summer homes, those in most cases are not funded by the person who yeah. is showing them. That's number one. And number yeah. two is even in the people who, the cases of people who are funding those things, in many situations, they started with a leg up. And like, for men too. We're not just yeah. saying it oh, with women. Oh, not just like, women. These showing men. Like especially I, I, the men. Especially the men. Like I used to date so many guys that I was like, oh my God, he's so smart and so self-made. And then you find out like his family like owns colors. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Like they, like it's always some random thing that no one even knows exists, like a screw on a car, like mm -hmm. one particular, Oh, we invented windmills. Like, you know, it's like, it's always something like that really like gives you a lot of financial like longevity. Yeah. And even, okay. But even if you don't, even if you don't have like that level of money, like, mm -hmm. I, I didn't grow up like particularly wealthy or rich. Yeah, yeah. Like my parents had an interesting financial situation, but what all in all, I had what I needed. Mm -hmm. But because my grandparents lived in Long Island, my mm -hmm. mom's parents, like we lived with them. Mm -hmm. So I was able to go to like a really good high school that mm -hmm. sent tons of kids to Ivy League schools. So I got, I went to Cornell mm -hmm. and then like, the the privilege kind of just multiplies on itself. But like if right. I didn't have like my my grandparents' house, my grandpa got was able to like he, he had like the GI Bill that like got him this house. And like you mm -hmm. think like like it's not like you yeah, it's like that privilege, like that like original privilege really took me to where I got. So even if it wasn't like I had tons of money and like could build a building at Cornell to get in, mm -hmm. like it's still mattered to like it where matters. I am. It puts you in the same places as other people who are accomplished or you assume are accomplished. And this is where I think like girl boss energy coincides with like, just like fucking patriarchy yeah. is like leaning into that audacity and genuinely believing that you are better and more deserving of being a boss because of where you started or whatever. 
And that's the thing that I'm like, no, 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 no. Like people have to be cognizant of bringing other people up. We try. I mean, like it has definitely been like a process of realizing like we all came from the same town, like, Mm -hmm. and you know, those privileges are shared. And I mean, Mm -hmm. we all have our unique stories and struggles that I think like enabled us to do this, but to think that it was just like, uh, you know, all our hard work and like Mm -hmm. just our own resilience and not a lot of, you know, that we had a lot of tools that were, Mm -hmm. and that were, that were helpful. Mm -hmm. But a little leg up doesn't account for hard work either. And like, that's the thing is like, there are some people who treat their security blanket or or their security net as a hammock. And there are some people who are like, no, I still like really want to create things and feel like I'm contributing. Yeah. I mean, I think that like people it depends. Like if you have a really, really huge security net, it's much easier to use it as a hammock, as you would say. But mm-hmm. if you're sort of just like, okay, like I have, you know, I'm, I'm in a good position. Mm-hmm. You can't really rest on that. Like, right, right, right. Like that much. But yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a, it's been an interesting time to reflect being, has you it, know. has it been obviously like you started it with two friends, has working with friends been crazy or delightful or a combination of both it's it's a com it's everything it is mm-hmm. like an incredibly emotional like unique experience mm-hmm. it's it is amazing like I wouldn't like I wouldn't like not do it you know right right um right. I would pick the juice is worth the squeeze yes exactly like if I could do it again I would um and yeah no it's definitely been like a ride I mean mm-hmm. I've known them since I was a kid and like we're you know you're going through your 20s together you have a business Mm -hmm. we've we've like been in a business relationship like longer than we've been with our significant others like that's like the it's it's crazy and a business is kind of like a marriage in a Mm -hmm. way um it's like more intense in some ways in some ways it is um yeah I mean because well it depends on your situation but in our situation it's like we're very lucky that we connect and, you know, mm-hmm. we really like, even though we have grown sort of like into our own individual people, like we still mm-hmm. relate and we still like get along and like share values and like mm-hmm. all those things. So I do feel very lucky. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love them. Like they're, they're yeah. my family, you know? So it's like, yeah. How do you go about, or like, how did you guys go about going from friends who have a business to business partners who are friends, you know, like becoming (sighs) more professional. It took like, it, it took a lot. The other thing to, to consider is that it wasn't like, oh, we, it's just the three of us Mm -hmm. as we're, we're all growing into kind of like our own people. The business is also growing. Mm -hmm. So we're always faced with sort of like new challenges, new questions to, to figure out, Um, and then like the challenges that like life throws at you, like the pandemic and having to figure out like how to, like, how are we going to pivot the business? Mm -hmm. And, you know, even pivoting with like platforms, there's so many, there's so many things that we have like dealt with that it was not like one day we, um, we just knew and decided it Mm -hmm. took a lot. Like we worked with a coach who sort of helped us. Yeah, that was like really critical. Um, we've worked with like a few different advisors and over time it's just been sort of an evolution to us being able to own our own areas and like business coach who like comes in for like a month. Bit. Oh no, it was like we went to like we went to like work with her and do like workshops and we talked like through like mm-hmm. you know, we tell we we would talk about like, what do we think our strengths are? Like mm-hmm. what are like pain points that we have in like decision-making mm. and like, how can we organize ourselves more efficiently? Cause like, honestly, like there were times where we were just all doing everything and there yeah. was like, it's like you do, you answer this email and like you answer this email, but now it would never be like a question who would really answer right. an email. Yeah. Um, but it was, it's a, it's a transition. Like it really takes like a lot of conscious work and sometimes it's easier to not confront things. Yeah. And that's probably like the, I would say like the thing I struggle with the most is like, if I like, um, was kind of like 
putting boundaries in place. Mm. But over time, like it's become, it's become easier. And I think like we've all matured and yeah. yeah. And with a coach present too, it probably really helps. Whereas like in a meeting before it's like, you can say what hurts you, but then that other person might take it defensively and then like it veers off and then, yeah. Yeah, no, we we haven't worked with a coach in a while, but we did for like a few months and to it was really it helpful. Yeah. yeah. It's like a business but, therapist. <laughs> yeah, no, I love that. Like, do you, do you remember if there was a moment when you guys were like, like this is officially a business? <laughs> it kind of came like slowly mm-hmm. um, because like, at each level, we were like deciding what are we going to do? Like, wh- like what, like where are we going to take it next? Mm-hmm. Um, we started making money like fairly early, um, mm-hmm. but it wasn't like a lot of money. It was just from like ads on the website. Um, and then Instagram was really like the biggest yeah. like revenue driver that came like at one time. Um, but we hired our first employee in 2015. So like I would say it was – like a little before it was before then, but mm-hmm. it wasn't like one time. Like we, we had like an LLC yeah. from the beginning. Yeah. 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 Okay. So yeah. you guys like set out to make it a business. Well, no, not originally. Um, oh, okay. When we started it, it was not at all supposed to be a business. We were just like in our college apartment, like messing around, like just mm-hmm. writing funny things. And we were anonymous because we thought we were going to try to get jobs. Yep. Um, and we didn't want to be like writing these like heavily satirical things that might, who mm-hmm. knows what an employer would think. Yeah. Um, so we did not set out to start a business. But after we graduated, like four or five months later, mm-hmm. we like kind of realized, you know, my fr- my friend's brother had, an, had a, my friend's brother was an agent. Mm-hmm. So he like, you know, people had contacted us like, mm-hmm. oh, we could make this into a TV show. So it slowly like became more of a commitment. Yeah. Um, and then it was something we were like doing really all the time. That's a nice, I mean, that's how I feel like how come start. I mean, obviously I wanted it to come really badly. Yeah. Um, right. but I love also, your like origin story. I really, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> like I was just like so mad and yeah. full of cum. Uh, <laughs> but like it was supposed to be creative content and fun and whatever. And we literally like, there was no talk of ads or taking money from our listeners or whatever until yeah people started reaching out and then there's that moment of oh oh maybe we should schedule weekly meetings or something right and then it becomes like official and it's like oh I'm selling a product oh Mm -hmm. I need a bank account like all Mm -hmm. those things came like after we graduated so like technically it was a business like after we graduated but yeah we did not start we did not like when we started it was not like yeah yeah Do you know what's funny? Okay, so we were talking about how you guys started it anonymously. And before we started recording, I was telling Sammy that I also used to be an anonymous Instagram (laughs) poster. Me and Lindsay Metzler had an account and a bunch of other friends in college. I think it was like right after Betches, there was then white girl problems. And then we decided to be stoner girl problems. And then there was a lot of girl problems and boy problems and lots of these things. Um, Some became their own brands. Some went nowhere but then they all started becoming not anonymous anymore and that was like a huge thing because it was like like our friend tim told somebody in london that we were stoner girl problem and we like freaked out we were like don't tell people like that's gonna lose us jobs when did you guys decide that you were gonna release who you were and like was that stressful as fuck um so we decided we we decided because um a New York Times reporter wanted to write about us. So that's ah, that's what we, I mean the catalyst. Wouldn't come <laughs> wouldn't come out for less than the than the New York Times. Mm-hmm. Come on. Totally. So, yep. Yep. So um that's that that is what that is when we came out. Okay. Um also at that time, like it was solid enough that like we didn't we weren't we were not getting other jobs. Um, right, right, and it right. was like, it was, it was on its, it was stood on its own. It was like two years old. I mean, now two years sounds like a joke, but mm-hmm. you know, it was two years old. We had, we were, you know, doing okay. So, 
and yeah, it wouldn't like we, affect how people because people used to think that stoner girl problem was one girl white girl problem was one girl betches yeah. was run by one girl or yeah. like you know like you assumed and you'd have these yeah. ideas of who she is in your mind yeah. or whatever and so i just thought it was i was like oh my god they're so brave but yeah for the new york times <laughs> yeah we'll do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't feel like i was like the stereo like the person someone would guess i would did not yeah like, yeah I do remember like someone like put my face on Instagram and was like, I, I'll never, like, I'm scarred for life from this. I was like, I can't believe this girl's betches. And it was just like, hashtag gross. Like horrible. That was like, but honestly, like other than that, of course I'm telling you the one bad thing. It's like so sure. yeah, classic, yeah, yeah. but generally, yes, it was good. <laughs> of course. But that's, like, that's what we were scared of is like, we can't come out of stoner girl problem. What if we're not hot enough? What if we're not what they want us to look like? You know? Yeah. I mean, that's its own. I can get into a whole discussion there. Like, mm -hmm. what do women have to look like? You but know? that's that's why I think it's interesting that all of these things did start anonymously. Because it was why. like, because maybe that's why. Because nobody could take that kind of attack on them personally. Yeah. I mean, you see, I mean, th the internet now is just like attack. The attack. worst place it's ever. It's just, just like a constant. I mean... For, for anything, like good reasons, bad reasons. Mm -hmm. It's just a shit show. Mm -hmm. I mean, I even attacked Kylie Jenner this morning and I never, never would have done that. But I mean, what she did was really kind of gross, um, gross. Like, are you kidding me, Kylie? You can't spare 60K. Do you when know you're what she unquote, did, you guys? Kylie Jenner's ha hair and makeup artist uh, got in a car crash. She donated. Five, she donated five. She donated five thousand dollars to the GoFundMe and Crazy. shared it and was like, "Hey, you guys, can you like support my hair and makeup artist?" And it's like, "Can you?" Yeah, this is like the worst recession in America. Yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> and like you're asking people to donate money to your friends and stylists' mm -hmm. surgery when you. Have like 35, like go sell some of your bags. I'm always very concerned about people who ha can never have enough getting into very high places. Cause oh, I'm like, like these aren't, yeah, but like, I'm like, these aren't our best people that We're are getting into these. Our best. We're not sending our best. Like I literally, <laughs> this is like a totally different conversation, but I, I remember like hearing these verdicts about rapists or like pre Brock, Brock Turner or whatever. And like all the, the narrative would be like, what about his life? What about his life? And like in my head, I was like, totally like as a wealthy person, you wouldn't want your kid to go to jail. But like, he doesn't sound like he's going to be great. No. Like he doesn't sound like the person that we want leading us and we like, keep plopping them into these positions or like letting them come up. Right. Like why, why not just try a consequence and see what why? it does? Yeah. Just see what it does for the person. Just for a treat. A lot of times, a lot of times it seems to like embolden them and like they're the victim, but like mm -hmm. we're talking about, I mean, like in a Brock Turner case, it's like, he's going to be fine. I think about this a lot with like, what you like the people at the top but especially mm -hmm. when you're thinking about like government mm -hmm. it's like if you're not in government to like help people like especially with like the covid relief bill how like no republicans voted for it okay mm -hmm. sorry if mm -hmm. there's a lot of republican listeners i apologize if you're not in government <laughs> to help people why are you in government for power and that's so why we'll power somewhere else but the thing is is the other the other avenues where people were like using misusing power we're also trying to shut them down like I know a lot of these comics I'm not even gonna say male comics a lot of uh, like comics actors people get into stuff so that they can have power and right. abuse that power usually like I feel like there were people looking at Harvey Weinstein being like I need to become a movie director <laughs> yeah. you know I mean yeah I mean and then at the time they were able to get away with it. Like mm -hmm. no one ever thought it was okay, I don't think, but they were I, just like, mm. they're just like, it's a system. This is how it is. We're in it, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, but that that is a thing is that we all think that there is a system and that like 
it can never change. That was another thing I've been saying since I was like in sixth grade. I was like, you guys think America's going to stick around? Have you seen Rome? Like right. everybody just thinks that what exists when they were born is what exists yeah. forever. And like, no, Betcha's logo has changed. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. Things change. People evolve. Things evolve. I, I think about, you know, it's so funny you mentioned like the Rome thing because I've been thinking about that, like, especially mm -hmm. the past like five to 10 years. Yeah. Like, I mean, a, my adulthood, basically. It's yeah. like, things are not working. Like, like it's, just, <laughs> it's just not, there's a lot wrong. And it, mm -hmm. it, And I've had people even say to me like recently, like, ask me like do you feel like it's like hopeless like do you feel like could it, it could ever get better and I hate to be like mm, like maybe mm. maybe it could get better but like mm. it's the trajectory is not is looking any indication good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 the trajectory is not looking good um, but that's not to say that it oh it's it's over for humans maybe no. America didn't get it right you know, no, like New Zealand, Robin. <laughs> yeah. No, like, it, right. The idea that like America is going to be like on top forever. When you look at like the re the facts and the reality on the ground of what is going on in America, it's just, mm -hmm. it's, it's insane to think that we would like mm -hmm. remain this like exceptional. I don't know. That yeah. whole thing was a myth anyway. Yeah. The other myth was like. Racism's well, over. Yeah, racism's <laughs> over, but also like. Even when we were being told racism's over, we were also still being fed. The guy that you want is white and he's Christian and he's 6'2 and he plays sports and he's in yeah. finance. Yeah. Right? Wasn't that the guy that we all wanted? Like even like, I don't know if it was a Betches thing, but I feel like there was like a finance guy. Oh yeah, totally. Like the pro. We, we called the it pro. the pro. Yeah. There's yeah. the pro and the bro. Oh my God, I'm having nostalgia. Yeah, the pro. Like the pro is like a grown up bro who has a job. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, no, that was definitely, and it's so it's so funny we're talking about this because this morning I recorded um, an episode of this up with do you know Emma Gray, she's mm -mm. like whatever she's on Instagram like whatever okay. she she was a HuffPost editor she has a Bachelor podcast so we were talking about the Bachelor and how like it really fed us this like strong like very heteronormative mm -hmm. Christian white mm -hmm. like fantasy and that that was like the norm and we were talking about how now like the bachelor obviously like refuses to deviate from it even though sure. it's kind of being demanded of them yeah but that was literally what our discussion was like that yeah this is what we were fed and that that's what you want like I I was talking about my ex and I was like I just feel so slighted that society made me think that that's what I wanted and that I was so lucky as a Jewish woman because my ex was, uh, he was in finance or he knew math and finance. played sports and yeah. And so I just remember being, oh, I'm so lucky as this lowly Jew dating this very mean person, honestly. And just thinking that that was the choice is like, because they're better than us, we just have to settle for how they're going to treat us. And it's like, there are so many other hot people in different races and genders that I would love to get down with, but was never told that you're going to have a happy ending if you choose one of them. Right. You need to choose this like rich guy and then, you know, send your kids to private school so that they get into an Ivy League school. Like that and is he has like, to be like, like slightly racist. Like he has to like make racist jokes. And he has like, to neg you. And neg you, yeah. And like not uh, equal right, they, down on you because that's not manly. Right. They th That's literally like a Sopranos episode um, I watched recently. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Corrado like breaks up with this woman because she talks about how he, whatever went down on her. It's it's a whole thing. Okay. But um and he's yeah. like embarrassed. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, I yeah, would this... never eat a pussy. I'm not gay. <laughs> right. Yes, that is literally what it was. Is that what it is? Yes, that is I've actually never a watched line. The that is literally a line. <laughs> yeah. And then That's the amazing. woman's like, How is that gay? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And then later in the episode, whatever. I don't want to give any spoilers That's so, for this 30 year old for this show. 30 year old show. <laughs> but, but yeah, no, that is like you're right, the opposite they're a little of me. I'm like, Dumbledore died. It's fine. Get over it. <laughs> I think about like the kind of guy I was into when like we first started Betches, like the specific guy even. Mm -hmm. He was so like emotionally 
unavailable, but I thought like, oh, like that's hot. Like we both had like mm -hmm. horrible family situations. <laughs> and like, yeah. like he's misunderstood. I'm misunderstood. It's like, no, I he was like just that like you're broken, yeah. broken like me. <laughs> yeah. But like, like he like, no, he's just like really high on Xanax and like <laughs> is, and like can't talk. Like he can't think because of the drugs. Like he's not, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like I thought that was like funny and like him fucking with me was like why? Yeah. 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 I used to think the ones that like strung me along for the longest, I was like, they That's must the be worth it. Yeah. Right? Or, or that they must really like me because they mm -hmm. wouldn't have kept stringing me along waiting mm -hmm. for the perfect moment. <laughs> mm -hmm. They must like me. Oh, wait. Okay. So the, we're changing gears, you guys. But um, you heard about Pete Davidson's girl that broke into his house. Because yes. she has like a parasocial relationship with him. She thinks they're like telekinetically like speaking or whatever. Yes. And I have the craziest thing to tell you. The girl, okay. my, the girl I was just with like for the weekend, Avi's, um, my husband's friend's girlfriend yeah. who we were yeah. hanging out with. She was it. The girl was in her sorority. <gasps> yeah. Gasp. There, I know. And she was telling me the story. I'm like, wow. What? Wow. Her Instagram handle like has Davidson as the last name. Yeah, they're married in her head. Okay, yeah, yeah. Me too. But when I heard about that or whatever, and she was like, yeah, I have this telegenic, like, telegenic. No, that's when you're good at looking good on TV. Telepathic. Telepathic. <laughs> I have this telepathic relationship with Pete. And I was like, wait, I feel like I was crazy for the majority of my life then because I used to like think like if I'm thinking this about our relationship he must be thinking it too same like same wavelength <laughs> same wavelength and it's like no again he's on Xanax <laughs> yeah. right right it's just yeah it's so and like how do we what I kind of wonder is like how do we make sure that like if we have kids like Sammy that, that like this is you the question right like how do we not how do we convey how do what self-respect is to them? I think we have to give them unconditional love. I think you're right. I feel the way that I was raised, and no shade to my parents, but a little bit of shade because like, <laughs> they're like dipped in society and stuff. And all they wanted was for their daughter to be accepted by society and normal and have an easy life. That's what we got yeah. fed early is yeah. if you fall in line, your life will be easier. Half the yeah. reason I didn't want to come out was because I heard that being gay is tough. Being right. bi is that was, tough. That was totally like a storyline. Like I wouldn't want my child mm -hmm. to suffer. It's like mm -hmm. me. No, like it's like they're only suffering because you, because generally people of that age yeah. are, are making it harder for them <laughs> and saying things like oh your instagram page no guy is going to want to date you if you say things like that no guy right. is going to want to date you if you wear things like that if you act this way and you make their whole life seem like it's leading up to be this thing for someone else no you love them unconditionally and be like yeah, if you like wearing that, you wear that. If like right. this makes you happy, like that makes you happy. If something's not making you happy, we're going to try and get you help. But like none of this like projecting who you want your kid to be on them anymore. Yeah, I think that that probably is the big mistake. Like if you want a specific kid, don't have kids. Right, <laughs> right. It's if you can't gonna... handle it's having dog. a gay kid, you can't have kids. If right. you can't handle having a kid with mental illness, don't have kids. Like, right. I love babies so, so much. Really? But do I want to have kids right now? No, that seems cruel because yeah, I think no. I'd still have expectations of them. Same. But it's it's really more that, like, I wish you could, like, kind of fast forward till they're, like, three. Like, I, like, I want to, like, you know. <laughs> but, like, you don't know. And, like, yeah, I don't know. I think once parents are more unconditional than kids understand that there is unconditional love out there for me. And it doesn't right. have to be for a specific person. I don't have to be a specific way for that love. Yeah. To be, yeah. No, to I be think given to me, I think the, uh, the real advantage some of our generation has is that we 
go to therapy and we're not mm-hmm. like embarrassed to talk about therapy and like mm-hmm. meds and, you know, all this like, you know, addressing the fact that trauma is a real thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that is probably like the biggest service that millennials have done for themselves because we got like yeah. such a shitty reputation, but it's fully because of what you said earlier, like, this, you know, our parents think like wanting to make everything like easy for us. Mm -hmm. So that made us the entitled people that they said we were. So I think it may be like after kind of getting that, that fed to us Mm -hmm. the past, like I would say like decade, I feel like a lot of our peers have been taking advantage of psychological help. And I hope that we're better at apologizing too. Like I think I think that the goal of cancel culture is just accountability and apologizing and stuff. And that is getting lost in the weeds or whatever. But people who are working on apologizing and owning shit, I think will be much better parents, you know, because there are a lot of times you'll say to my, your parents, this thing that you did fucked me up. And instead of being like, I'm so sorry, I didn't know any better. They'll be like, oh, please. Right, right. No, it's ho- totally. But I, I think, the, okay, I think the thing with the apologies is that like the reason people are afraid to apologize is because the kind of, the system has taught us that there's like nothing worse that you can be that than being wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like, Right, than being wrong. Mm-hmm. So like if being wrong and failure weren't so stigmatized, mm-hmm. I think people would have an easier time making genuine apologies rather than becoming like defensive about it. Totally. And I think when they're forced to become defensive about it, people are less willing to like actually look into what they might have done wrong. Right. So, yeah. And we have such like a litigious society that like if you do admit to any wrongdoing, people think of it as like a door open that to, too. Yeah. I didn't even like, I wasn't even thinking about that, but that is such like a, it's such a good point. Half of like what people are, the way people I think respond to things, like let's take The Bachelor, for example. Mm-hmm. It's like a cover your ass mentality mm-hmm. because they don't want legal liability because that's more of a problem mm-hmm. than like moral liability, I guess. Right. You can, you can also tell when somebody's apologizing to cover their ass and when they're very sorry. Yeah, you can. People know. No, it's but true. For the children specifically, like I do think that would be nice of us to listen to them. Oh, mommy, you hurt my feelings today when you made fun of me saying "woof if" instead of "what if." I'm so sorry that I made you feel that way. Like it's, it's even you know. I will say, I have a mother. Have a mother. I love my mother. Mm-hmm. I have a mother who definitely made some really substantial mistakes in my upbringing mm-hmm. but she has since apologized mm-hmm. I, like I, and she tried to apologize a few times before I felt like she really got it got what she was apologizing but then for she, yeah yeah but then she got it mm-hmm. and the like way that it has helped me heal is in, like it can't That's be awesome. rivals like that yeah. like other that you know that getting the apology yeah but yeah no I think you're very right about that <laughs> a lot out of you which is fun let me just make sure yeah I feel like this is great like yeah we're great we could do this like a million more times we should move in together should, yeah. just kidding <laughs> um, <laughs> that that no 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 that that's yeah. something I'm learning don't jump well, into friendships too quickly You've no we done can that talk. before no I no honestly like I'm really down to be your friend like I wouldn't say it <laughs> okay I know I'm like really down to be your friend I yeah. watch your story every day yes. and yeah, I just won't tell you like too many secrets and did then we, maybe we'll like become trustworthy and then we'll tell secrets. Yeah, did we just become best friends? <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh, do you know what I was going to say too about parents? And I don't know, I don't think, I said this on another podcast, but I, it's smart enough that I need to bring it over here. <laughs> um, our parents, I don't, I don't know if I can speak for everyone's parents, but I felt my parents specifically wanted me to be friends with people that would elevate me, quote unquote. Um, And so I just remember if I had prettier girlfriends, that felt like a win. Totally. Like Um, that. Yeah. So 
I, I know exactly like what you mean. Like I know the exact type of parent that, mm-hmm. that you're talking. Like I have a, I have a family friend who's, whose mom would like, she was really like that person. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, but think about like what made your parents want that. Right. Like they were obviously taught something. That if you have a group of pretty girlfriends and you travel with them, then more boys will want to hang out with that group of friends. Whereas I wish they had just been like, oh, your friend who's necessarily not the cutest but makes you ecstatic, great friend. You know, that is what you just described is kind of the whole essence of like a sorority. Like Mm -hmm. if you just hang out with like the prettier girls, Mm -hmm. then more hot guy frats Mm -hmm. full of guys that will treat you like shit. Just like you want. Wait, did you guys invent sorority girl syndrome? No, I don't think so. What is that? Do you remember? It was like the, if you are with a bunch of other sorority girls, you look hotter by default. Oh, we didn't invent that. But that is like, that's, I think like a psychological principle. Like I'm pretty sure it's like been shown that like, if you are with hotter (laughs) people, you look hotter. But that is, that is the whole, that's the whole thing behind the sorority. Like Mm -hmm. that's why, like what is rush if not um, a way to get the most attractive, coolest Mm -hmm. seeming on first impression people Mm -hmm. into your group like you're picking a group of women like it's yeah it's like a beauty pageant just it's a beauty pageant run by other women but with the male gaze in mind Mm -hmm. right just constantly the extent to which the male gaze is like critical in what sororities are Mm -hmm. like there would not be sororities if there weren't fraternities i totally think so it's like yeah it it really is kind of all about what is hot for men. Like, yeah. like, it's no like status symbols. Instead of like genuinely focusing on like, this is my friend who I play the Sims with and we do it for five hours and it makes us super happy or whatever. It's like, oh, but you should be hanging out with this person because they know this person. Right. And they go here and they, and wear they this go here and, and you start to get confused. What do we value? Exactly. It's right. I think the, I think, Oh, both the dogs are here now. Um, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's really cute. We'll have you um, back. I'll come back. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. No, it's it really does come down to sort of like a question of like split values. Like I, mm-hmm. don't, I don't really know many people who like ever had their values like explicitly stated like in childhood. Like, right. Like, do you know anyone who was like, I, I, I will say this. So my, my, my husband's family is, is religious. They're Orthodox mm-hmm. Jews. Mm-hmm. So their values were very explicitly stated in the home. Sure. Like, like spelled out. That was not like the case in my family. Like mm-hmm. it, so then you pick it up via signals mm-hmm. and before you know it, you're just sort of like chasing, you don't even know what you're and chasing. Even societal sing- signals, like maybe nobody said we hate black people. But you see in pop culture that it seems to be they're stealing the cultural stuff, but they're putting it on white people. So it right. seems like we don't like black people. We like what they make, but we don't like what they do. And that gets in your head. And also thinking about like when when we were growing up, like what movies were made and mm-hmm. what roles were black people given in those movies? Like mm-hmm. what what like storylines were there about like when about other races on TV shows? Like who mm-hmm. were those what were those people like stereotypically portrayed as? And like of course you pick up like these assumptions. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it's great that like you can realize them and realize that those aren't your values and stuff and like just because you've grown around seeing other stuff you can be like oh yeah no this world that we're in is kind of fucked and maybe here's why and we can be like a little bit of change that we want to see yeah it's definitely I feel like you know obviously you along with I'm sure a lot of your listeners have had like you know some sort of like a bit of like an awakening to like such an awakening yeah yeah I don't I mean I don't know if this is going to stay in but I remember when I when I think it was like during like the Trump election, like the first time in like 2015, 16, when I was really starting to notice what white supremacy meant, you know, and really being like, no, I do inherently trust people who look like me or think that they deserve more or whatever. And I had this day that I broke down in the subway, hysterically crying and pointing to people in my brain going, 
equal to me, equal to me, equal to me, equal to me, every single person or whatever. And just being like, how dare you ever think otherwise? I kind of had, it's, you know, it was, it was a process over, I would say all of these sort of like thoughts started to percolate mm-hmm. with the Trump presidency, the election. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he really did. I feel like cancel culture is sort of like a sublimation of like what everyone wishes they could do to him. Yeah. And like, but because he obviously was not, it was not possible to take him down no matter what he did. Mm -hmm. Um, That I think it ended up being people taking it sort of out on each other. And Mm -hmm. then it, but, but really for a real reason, because they want accountability, but but it's what like sort of the fervor came from because they can't get accountability from this one person who now is every day present in the news in our lives. And he sort of stands for all of these things that we're trying to like excise yeah. via cancel yeah. culture. Yeah. I think that's why it it sort of picked up then. And then when you're watching this happen, it really forces you to like see see white supremacy and not in the not yeah. in like the Ku Klux Klan stereotype, but see it as like how it's structurally sort of there. Yeah. And then honestly, like when I had that realization too, like it was a break, it was very it really shook me mm-hmm. like, like, Oh, the world is not fair for everyone. Yeah. Like it, it's, and we know, than- and we knew that, but then there was also this thing of like, well, it's not just you're privileged. It's like you deserve it. And it's like, that's just not true. <laughs> right. It's once, once you sort of see it, it's like, I'll give this analogy. Uh, the, the idea of this analogy came from Jesse Jaws, who used to love Jesse. Yeah. So she, so she, she analogized it like to being colorblind and then being able to like see in color. I know mm-hmm. it's ironic that I'm using the word color, yeah. but it's yeah. it's not. Re- it's it really is truly about being able to like see something that you couldn't before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like the giver. I was about to say that, but then I was like, "Will she know that one?" Of course. Yeah. I think we're in the same grade. <laughs> yeah, I can see grade. <laughs> I know what you mean grade. by grade. Yeah. yeah. Same. What do you guys call it, Rob? Year? Year. Uni. Cool. At uni. That's also what I was going to say. I think your sorority thing is just, it's an American thing. Like, we don't have mm, those sorority is. cults. Mm-hmm. We don't sorority have that. Cults. And also yeah. the, the sorority girl effect that you're thinking of. I'm pretty sure it's the cheerleader effect from How I Met Your Mother. Yes. Oh. That's what it is. Maybe, but I do remember somebody, it was, no, it was sorority girl syndrome. Yeah, I just and Googled as well. And the only thing that comes up is how What I year was that? How I Met Your Mother was a long time ago. Yeah, so is college. <laughs> I feel like it's all just the same idea that like when you position people next to more attractive people. They appear more attractive, but they're not. E- it's like they're not even necessarily more attractive. Like you separate them all, and it's like, oh wait, no, they're all just blonde and like have yeah. teeth and look the same. Yeah, and are thin. Um, but yeah, I saw a tweet the other day that was like, I don't think fraternities should be allowed anymore. Like there should be no spaces where like just one gender hangs, like or like one race hangs or one religion hangs. Like, I, I mean, besides like religious spaces, but like. I mean, the thing but that, still, it's like it doesn't it doesn't make you less extreme when you only hang out with like the well, it's yeah. also like the, the, they're not just like spaces for like guys to hang. Like there's a lot of there's a lot more to it than that. Yeah. Like these traditions that are toxic, like the sort of um apologetics that are allowed when it comes Mm -hmm. to certain treatment Mm -hmm. of women Mm -hmm. the locker room talk as they call it like it's not just guys hanging out right it's it's a set of traditions that are like codified and then nepotism that makes them go into these high positions after they've been apologized for whatever um and i think that that is the little cancel thing again where we're just like no like we can't keep letting this happen with these bad people getting into these high fucking places and yeah just people need more accountability and less secret s- spots yeah 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 it is such a good point about how it, it becomes more harmful when you then have like the alumni association and then yeah. they get like this guy who like you know who knows it's not to say every guy is bad but like even you know, if they've t- drugged their friends like that's not great 
No, that that's definitely you know, and that's what we that. learned in in 2016 is that like, oh, all these things that people were just saying, oh, it's just a joke, it's just a joke. Mm, some of them are real feelings for other people, and that's why it's scary. Yeah, that is very true. Anyway, this has been great. Grace is here now. Hi, Grace. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. She's really cute. Little evil baby. <laughs> um, but Sammy Sage, this has been so wonderful to have you here. Um, an icon, a legend. Oh, stop. A business betch. <laughs> Not a girl boss. A not a girl, but a business bitch. And now, you know, us best friends, but like not too quickly. And now best <laughs> friends. Because you, you don't want to jump into it. But because I'm, I'm like afraid, ready. but I'm also yeah. like ready for a new best friend. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I think you would like my other friends. I mean, we could combine. We could and combine you already friends. know one of my best friends because he worked I know. for you. <laughs> like, that's what I'm saying. Like we could combine. Like, you I'm know. so excited. Yeah. Post pandemic. I don't know if, don't know if you like, know what Richard's up to now, but I don't. Mm, he started doing drag and Oh really? Like, yeah. He's just got like so many wigs and boobs and like we're that like after the pandemic, we just need to like get together and dress up. Yes. And I think you should be there. I want to come. That sounds really fun for him. Amazing. I would yeah, love no, to he's, see Rich. He's fucking perfect. He's done such a journey too. Yeah. It's like if you look back on like this decade for like I would say many people we know, like Mm-hmm. There have been, you know, some people they just went like whoops on the path, but yeah, others did not. So yeah, and sometimes the road less traveled is like a lot more fucking fun. Like Richard and I were like, yeah, we're people's weird friend. <laughs> you Are know, you? yeah, Are you? yeah, like we're fucking weird, and like You're not that weird. <laughs> you don't uh, know. You don't know yet, but um, <laughs> no, like there's um. There's never an end to growth. And there's like a lot of people that you think like, oh, I didn't pick the right major. I didn't pick the right first job or whatever. And like, I used to be like, oh, I didn't start acting class until like college. Like it's too late. It's never too late. It's literally never too late. And just like go do shit. I have a friend who's like, she's our age. She's in our grade. She's mm-hmm. going to take, she's going to, she's going to take the LSATs. Like amazing. She's been working for years. Like, I know a woman who became a doctor when she was in her forties. Anyone can do anything. Yeah. Not, not really, but like... Anything. Hope, you know. That sounds well, very girl bossy. Yeah, that's true. There are limitations, but we will... We would like to help, and we would like you to believe in yourselves. <laughs> yes, that's what, we'll, that's what we'll say. Please believe in yourself. Um, Sammy Sage, where can everybody find you and Betches online? So Betches, I'm sure you know, at Betches, Betches Mm Betches.com. For Mm -hmm. me, you can find me at Sammy on Instagram, S-A-M-I. Also, I do a number of podcasts, the Betches (laughs) Up. The morning announcements is like my new baby where I break Mm -hmm. down the news every day in less than Mm -hmm. five minutes. Amazing. So you know everything that's going on. You don't have to do any news work after that. So it's the best. Mm -hmm. And then Diet Starts Tomorrow where Aileen and I, my co-founder, talk about diet struggles fantastic i have to ask this to everybody after a sexual experience which this is sexy and fun yeah. um sammy did you finish i fi- yes i did definitely okay amazing amazing yeah. i love it um thank you so much for coming thank you punny i like thank it. you thank you yeah. yeah um and you guys we'll see you next time on how come goodbye goodbye it's not you it's me I try so hard to finish honestly They say you'll know When you go all the way from A right down to O Oh no I think that I still got a ways to go Oh oh I'm sick of this and I have got to know How come? How come? How come I can't achieve? How come I can't achieve? I'm rolling up my sleeves. I'm rolling up my sleeves. Oh, baby, I believe these guests can help. Cause I can't do it by myself. I wanna just.